Jews make up like less than 3% of the entire US population. However, if you take a look at Forbes 400, you will find out that almost a hundred of them are Jews. That's literally like 25%. So why are there so many rich Jewish people? Larry Ellison, who is worth almost $150 billion, is also a Jew. Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, is also a Jew and is worth almost $110 billion. Michael Bloomberg is another example, who is also a Jew and is worth like $96 billion. Take a look at Europe. Every European country has at least few Jewish billionaires. I mean, even Russia, literally an enemy of the United States. I mean, these two countries are fighting proxy wars across the globe. And yet, the richest billionaires in both of these countries are Jews. And that was the case literally for the last few hundred years. Think of the Rothschild family. Some people estimate that their net worth is like $500 trillion. The GDP of the United States is just $23 trillion. I don't know to what extent that is true, but the fact that we have conspiracies that tell us that their net worth could be around $500 trillion tells us a lot about how rich these people are. But let's clarify something. Not all Jews are rich. There are a lot of poor Jewish people. You probably met some of them. However, percentage-wise, they are probably like the richest community on the face of the earth. So what exactly are these people are doing differently? There are a little more than 15 million Jews worldwide. Let's assume that number is higher. Let's say it's like 20 million. That is still less than 1% of the entire global population. However, if you take a look at the global elite, they make up a huge percentage of them, which is why there's so many conspiracies about the Jews. Now, I wanna make a disclaimer. This video isn't to spread hate or anti-Semitism or conspiracies but rather to answer a very simple basic question. Why are there so many rich Jewish people? I mean, it's not a coincidence. There must be something that these people are doing differently. So, if you're ready to find that out, give this video a thumbs up and let's dive in. Number one, becoming successful was a matter of life and death. By the 10th century, most of Europe were Christians. Religion didn't just win over the hearts of the people but it was ingrained in the political structure. The king himself should be blessed by the Pope in order that is sent by the God in order to protect the people. Otherwise, he's not a real king, but just another peasant walking around with the crown. I know that it sounds insane, but that was literally the case with Europe for the last few hundred years. Well, that doesn't seem like a real problem. Minorities, especially the Jews, were the biggest victim because people just blamed them for all of their problems. So they were scattered across Europe and literally lived in ghettos and were treated as second-class citizens. Nobody hired Jews because they thought that if you're going to hire a Jew, he's going to ruin your business because he's going to bring with him bad luck. This pushed them to work harder, smarter, and outperform everyone else. Becoming successful for a Jew was literally a matter of life and death. Being a Jew wasn't just a matter of a religion. It's something you're born with. It's like a race. So you couldn't just wake up one morning and tell everybody, listen guys, I'm no longer a Jew and people stop treating me like a Jew. That was not an option, which is why Jews had to rely on their community for survival. And that's the reason why they built strong communities. When one Jew worked hard and got to the top, he made sure to bring to the top other Jews because he knows that should something happen, he cannot rely on anyone except for his community. When a Jew opens a business, what do you think he does? He cannot hire anyone else other than the Jew because hiring someone else will make you a victim of anti-Semitism. So to protect yourself and hire someone you trust, he had to hire another Jew, which is how they helped each other to grow their communities and build strong communities that help each other to grow. You can already imagine what kind of harsh circumstances these people lived for centuries, which is why they often became entrepreneurs from an early age instead of just relying on someone else, relying on being hired by another person. That's why we have so many Jewish entrepreneurs all around. That entrepreneurial spirit has stayed with them until today. That's why we have so many successful Jewish entrepreneurs from Sergey Brin to Mark Zuckerberg. Yes, Mark Zuckerberg also has Jewish roots. Number two, money is the root of all evils. You probably have heard this phrase before. 
This was the motto that people lived by in Europe for centuries, because church encouraged people to live simple frugal life and not chase money and wealth, because money can corrupt you. This was the case in Europe for centuries, which made people financially illiterate. You can even see the side effects of this even today. You can find parents who teach their kids that money is bad, money is the root of all evils. It was even the foundation upon which communism was born that literally spread across Europe, where making money was illegal. They would just tell you that, listen, just work hard and let the government take care of everything. Yes, you will work hard for the government and the government will distribute the wealth fairly across everybody. That was literally how the Soviet Union was born. However, that was not the case with Jews, because Jews encouraged financial literacy. Saving money, opening a business, uh, being an entrepreneur was seen something noble in Jewish communities. When the Soviet Union collapsed, Jews were the first people to jump in and capitalize on the fall of the Soviet Union. They traveled across Europe, across the United States and Japan and Asia and the rest of the world and borrowed as much money as they could in order to come back to the Soviet Union and buy former Soviet factories for pennies. So when the chaos was over, these factories started to worth a lot more, like a hundred times more, which is why we have so many rich Jewish billionaires in Russia. Number three, loaning money with interest was illegal. While well, Edison changed the world by inventing the light bulb and Steve Jobs changed it by inventing the iPhone, all of this wouldn't be possible if there was not an effective global financial system. However, both in Christianity and Islam that dominated the world for centuries, loaning money with interest was illegal. However, that was not the case under the Jewish law. But in all of these religions, loaning money with interest was a great sin. So this field automatically was just let for Jews to dominate. They became the masters of banking, loaning money and trade. They taught their kids from early age these industries, which is why they grew up financially much more literate than everyone else in Europe. One of the people that stood out was Amschel Rothschild. He built his career managing assets. Over time, he realized that there was not an effective global financial system. It was really expensive to send money from one European country to another, which is why he decided to send his five sons to five different European capitals. London, Vienna, Paris, Naples, and Frankfurt. If you wanted to send money back then, you had to give that money to someone and he had to physically take that money to another city. However, in this case, with these five brothers, you could just pass the money to a Nathan in London and James will pass it to someone else, to whoever you want, back in Paris. That's why the cost of sending money was extremely reduced by them. They literally built the first ever modern financial system. And the best thing about it is that this was happening right when the Industrial Revolution was kicking off across Europe, which actually skyrocketed the demand for global banking. This made the five brothers some of the richest people on the face of the earth, which is why we have so many conspiracies that they could have as much wealth as $500 trillion. And the European leaders who waged wars across Europe or wanted to fund their expedition and colonialism across the globe had to borrow money from somewhere. And the Rothschild family and the Rothschild bank was the perfect place, which is how they built close ties with European leaders and became European nobility. Kings and queens across Europe always hired Jews as their financial advisors because they were much more financially literate than any other group in Europe. This practice even has continued upon this day. I mean, if you take a look at the key financial positions in Europe or even the United States, you will find out that they're occupied by Jews. Ben Bernanke was the chairman of the Fed during the 2008 financial crisis. Janet Yellen, who is also a Jew and is secretary of the Treasury of the United States as I'm recording this video. Financial literacy isn't just another subject for Jews. It's a household practice to teach your kids about money, to teach them how the global financial system works, to teach them how the banking works. That's why when uh, someone grows up in a Jewish family, they automatically become financially extremely literate. Number four, Jews were not allowed to own land. Land was the most precious asset for most of history. 
landowners were the nobility who actually ruled the country. However, because of the discriminatory laws, Jews were not allowed to own land. So they had to pursue other professions in order to grow to the top and become successful, which is why they became entrepreneurs and scientists. While the European nobility focused on acquiring as much land as possible, because the more land you had, the higher was your status in the society. But that was not the situation for Jews. They literally did not have that option. Number five, Jews understand the value of money. People often make fun of Jews because even when they make a lot of money, they still live frugal, simple life. But that's their secret to wealth. Most people don't understand a very simple basic fact. If you spend as much money as you make, then you will just never be rich, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much money you are making. You will only be rich when you make more money than you spend. And then you use that extra money that you are making, instead of just buying crap you don't need, you save it until you can buy assets such as stocks, bones, or houses. So the more assets you buy that bring you more money, the richer you will get. And over time, you will have plenty of assets that generate so much cash that you don't have to work. And you will use that cash to buy even more assets. So over time, you will just become successful financially. Buying a house is just one of the examples of assets. It could be anything else that generates income. However, all of that is impossible unless you first teach yourself how to save money. Most people watching this video are capable of making money by trading their time. However, most people are not capable of saving money. However, if you take a look at Jews, they always prioritize saving over spending, which is why in the long run, they end up just having more assets, which is why in the long run, they end up being rich. And now it's your turn. How about you? Why do you think Jewish people are so rich? What exactly are they doing differently? And if you're a Jew, let us know in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.